Tractor.com. It's Top That Trade Day. Joining us now, Phil Striebel, filling in for Phil Flynn and Alan Nuckman, an options trading guru. Here we go, guys, with round number one, small fall. The Russell 2000 lagging for the year. Is that a reason to worry? I look at it as more of an opportunity. So you've seen small cap stocks not participate in this rally, down about 10% uh, in the last year compared to the overall market, up about 5%. So uh, I'm still very positive, very bullish. I think they're going to have a little rubber band snap back. But it is interesting from an economic standpoint that they've uh, they've suffered so far. No, I completely disagree with Alan altogether. If you look back in October 3rd, 2018, the Russell had made its high. This was several days prior to the Dow Jones. What happened? Fast forward. Dow Jones falls 2,000 points. Russell falls 100 points. So Russell is your leading indicator lower. Let's heat it up, guys. Come on. Round number two, Coke and a smile. Coke recently printed an all-time new high, and the CFO says the dollar is reaching the end of its strength cycle. Do you buy the pop? Well, I mean, if you look at the dollar, it's based in a very important role with Coca-Cola. 46% of Coca-Cola's product is sold in the United States. As that dollar goes up, that's going to affect that purchasing. If the dollar peaks from here, yes. if the dollar peaks... I've been talking the dollar down will, for almost a year, and it's still holding up. Yeah, they're going to cut 25 to 50 basis but, points. But why is dollar not down further? It should be down below that 95 level. It should be going down. It should have been going down this whole last couple of months. Here's the point, though. It's a teeter-totter effect. When the dollar goes down, the euro currency goes up, that's where yeah, that other I, part of Coca-Cola sales comes from. I get that from. part of the equation. Coke has actually done extremely well for a conservative Dow stock. It's up 15% in the last year, again, compared to the Dow, up about 5%. So uh, looking at the Dow, I still think a lot more upside exists. Let's remember, it dropped from 27,000 down to 22,000. So that's a 5,000-point move. Tack that on that old high. We're looking at 32,000, which is 18% above. Round number three, ECB slices. The ECB says that the rates will remain low there for a while, but there might even be a cut by 2020. So do you invest in bonds that could be big losers? Why would people put money into bonds if they know it's a it's going to be a loss. Well, you're getting in at such a low level. It doesn't make sense to me right, right now. Right. If you're getting in, like, you, you, interest rates in Europe, you know, they've been down here at the zero level for the longest period of time. It's only happened once here in the United States where we got very close to the zero level. We were at 0.14% in 2011. I don't think we're obviously going to head that, that much lower. But low rates, we're seeing the, the uh, mortgages continue to drift lower. I still see this as a positive. And if we can, if we go lower in rates a couple of times, maybe that'll knock the dollar down, and that could be a big catalyst for the overall market. Yeah, I mean, who's going to end up at zero first, the ECB or <laughs> the Fed? Right. It's, it's a battle. It's a fight. Here's your bonus round question for today. It's a revolution. Plant-based everything these days. Is Baskin Robbins the latest to use plant-based ice cream? True or false? Yes. It's absolutely true. I read the news already, and they're going to have a chocolate chip uh, with almond butter ice cream uh, available soon. The, the lesson we learned here is Baskin Robbins is, is part of Dunkin' Donuts. Short cows. Good work today, guys. Thanks so much for coming on. Business First AM continues right after this.